Hi, I hope life is treating you well. Let me begin with an interesting question. Have you ever read a story in the Bible and you ask yourself one question, why is that story in the Bible? Well, let me read a story in the Bible and I think we're gonna to talk today about how to deal with stress, personal stress that's self-imposed, and we're gonna look at what Jesus did. This is Mark chapter eight, starting with verse 22. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes, he put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. He saw his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't go into the village. In my Bible study, I look and say, why in the world was this story in the Bible? Well, let's dig deep for a second. Jesus meets this blind man and it takes him two touches to get it right. Now, let me ask a question. If it takes you two efforts to get something right, what do you do between the first and second effort? I would suspect probably between your first effort, which is a fail, and your second effort, which may be successful, you beat yourself up, you criticize yourself, you tell yourself that you're worthless and you're no good and you knew you couldn't do it. Now, what do we learn from Jesus in this story between the first and second touch? All he did was he touched the man again. There was no self-critique. There was no criticism. Jesus, between the first and second touch, did not beat himself up. Now, let's make this personal. When you make a mistake, do you beat yourself up after making a mistake, or do you simply look at yourself and say, okay, how come that didn't work, and what can I do differently? Proverbs 24, 16 says this, though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. I believe at times the best learning tool we have is failure. If we can figure out why we failed and what we can do differently between the first and second touch, that's a great way to learn. But typically what happens when we make a mistake, we just beat ourselves up. And then our self-imposed stress, the stress we put in ourself becomes critical. Andrew, when you do your sermon and it's online, do you ever watch it later and critique it? Yes. Okay, now watch. Andrew doesn't know we're gonna do this, but he's behind the camera, but he's my, my Sunday school lesson today. Andrew, when you critique yourself, do you find the awe in it, or do you find the flaw in it? I've learned to find both, but initially it's definitely the flaw. Okay, so when you find the flaw, you're gonna beat yourself up. And here's what's ironic. Once your sermon is done, let's say you did Facebook Live and you watched it later, and it's out there for everyone to see, you critiquing that isn't gonna change it, is it? No, now obviously we can always learn from mistakes, but a lot of times we beat ourselves up for our mistakes. Now I'm gonna ask you to do two things to help you with this. From now on, when you look at yourself and your performance, I want you to do two things. Number one, stop comparing yourself. If you wanna increase stress in your life, just compare yourself to somebody else. I think I told you this before, I have a twin brother. He's an architect. He designs churches. He's amazing. Now, if you ask me to design your church, I guarantee you, you will not tell me my design's amazing. You will look at me and say, what is that? And I'll say, that's your church. And you'll say, no, it's not. I was in shop class in seventh grade. I made my dad for Christmas a candy dish. I brought it home, it was wrapped, it's for him for Christmas, he opened it up, he used it as a cigarette ashtray. Well, here's my candy dish being used as an ashtray. And later my dad said, thank you for the ashtray. I said, you're welcome. Now, he didn't later ask me, was it a candy dish? Now, what happens is we compare ourselves to people. You wanna increase your stress, compare yourself. 
You can compare yourself physically, intellectually, emotionally, socially, or spiritually. All five of those comparisons are bad. And go back to what Andrew said, when you look at your performance, you typically look at the flaw. You look at what you did wrong, and then you beat yourself up for it. How about we find the awe in what we did? How about we do exactly what Jesus did, and in between the first and second touch, we don't beat ourselves up? Okay, so one thing I want you to work on is not compare yourself. Let me give you two verses I love. Judges 8 deals with comparison. He answered them, what, I have, what have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes better than the full grape harvest of a visor? God gave Orb and Zeb, the Midian leaders, into your hands. What have I accomplished compared to you? At this, their resentment against him subsided. Now, comparison. In this case, Gideon compared himself to what other people have done. And I love this. Look what he says in verse 2. Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes. Now, the gleaning was the second time through the crop, or the third time through the crop. He just said that the third time, time through the crop was better than his original grapes. He's comparing his crops. You can compare your talent. You can compare your singing. You can compare your driving. Let me blow your mind for a second. I believe that comparison is a sin. Wow, hold on. Let me say that again. I believe that comparison is a sin. Why? Because it says in Song of Songs 6 9 that we're unique. You can't compare unique things. But here's what's ironic we compare all the time and we don't measure up. One of the ways we get stressed in our life is we compare and we feel like we're failures. Reality. How about we learn to leave ourselves alone? How about we learn to quit beating ourselves up? I do an assignment with my clients called QPYD. It stands for quit putting yourself down. And here's what's sad. There are some people who are so good at put downs they do it without even being aware of it. Example, I believe there's three ways you can take a compliment. You can totally reject it. You can deflect it, or you can make that compliment reflective of who you are. How do you reject a compliment? I just look at Andrew and said, Andrew, your sermon was amazing. Now, Andrew, in that scenario, how would you deflect or just totally push away that compliment. You would tell me that your sermon was what? Not very good. Not very good. I just said his sermon's amazing, and he just said it's not very good. I thanked him for what he's done for me, and he said, oh, Charlie, it's nothing. Now watch. I brought something in. This is called friendship cake. I have an idea. When I give this to somebody, I'm showing them friendship. Let me ask a dumb question. Are you friends with you? Do you see yourself as a friend? Or do you treat yourself so poorly that if people heard what you said about yourself and they had the same opinion, they wouldn't like you? Now, this is really dumb, by the way. Friendship cake or bread. But watch, Andrew, to show you my friend, a client made me from some friendship bread, and I want to give it to you and your wife. Thanks, Charlie. Now, look what he did. He said two words. He said thank you. He received the gift, an assignment. When you get a compliment from somebody, say thank you. Don't critique it. Say thank you. Now, what does it mean to critique? There's five ways to receive a compliment. You can think the person's just being nice. They've done something wrong. They want something for you in return. 
they're deceived or ready for the last one how about they're telling the truth so I've got two assignments stop beating yourself up stop comparing stop self-criticism Jesus didn't do it in Mark 8 there were multiple times Jesus could have criticized himself Nicodemus John 3 came at night Jesus could have criticized himself because Nicodemus didn't want to be seen with him in daylight. Jesus could have said, gosh, I must not be worthwhile. He doesn't want to see me in the daylight. I would love for you to stop all self-criticism. Now, I don't mind critique. But there's a phrase we've been taught that I totally disagree with. Have you ever heard the word constructive criticism? Okay, let me tear that word apart, that phrase apart for you. The word construct means to build up. The word criticize means to tear down. I believe that constructive criticism is actually a lie. Now, I don't mind critique. And watch, if somebody says to you, can I critique you? I'm open for that. I should take their critique. You know, if Andrew says to me, Charlie, you could have done this differently. If I believe he's my friend, and he is because I gave him my friendship bread, I see his critique as being honest to improve who I am. Wow. But here's what happens. We critique ourselves all the time. We feel we're not good enough. We feel like we're worthless. We feel like we're not lovable. We feel that people are better than us. Wow. Proverbs 23, 7. Solomon writes this. Whatsoever a man thinketh within himself, so he is. In other words, if you believe you're a failure, guess what? You are. Now, obviously, you can have an inflated ego. That's terrible. There's a, two psychologists out of Cornell called Dunning and Kruger, and they created the Dunning-Kruger effect, which basically says this, people are clueless that they're clueless. In other words, there are people who believe that they have great physical skills or singing ability. The truth is they don't, but they think they do. Now, that's awful. Because all of a sudden, let's say I think I've got a great voice. So my grandmother's been telling me my voice is wonderful. And now I'm at a, on American Idol. And I am face to face with Simon Cow, the old Simon Cow. He hears me sing. Five seconds within my song, I hear a buzzer. Why? Because my voice is terrible. I don't mind honest critiques. You know, all of us, in reality, we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. Every one of us. Every personality has a strength and a weakness. But what happens is we beat ourselves up, and that's one of our weaknesses. So here's my idea. When you get a compliment, I want you to say thank you. You can actually reject a compliment without saying a word. You can roll your eyes and you can grunt. So, Andrew, you think your sermon was, wasn't all that good and I said it was amazing? Now, here's what's ironic. You and I have looked at the same performance and we have two different opinions. Can we both be right? No. No. Now, here's a, here's a bizarre thought. He's going to think that his critique is more accurate than mine. Maybe in reality, his critique is based on bias, and it's wrong. So here's my idea. Stop comparison and stop critiquing. Galatians 6, 3 and 4. The best way to remember where Galatians is, is the acrostic, go eat popcorn. It's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Galatians 6, 3, and 4. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Dunning-Kruger. I believe that I'm as good at golf as Rob Tyler. I can believe that all I want to. In reality, Rob Tyler on the golf course smokes me like I'm a salmon. So I believe I'm something when I'm nothing. But reverse it for a second. What happens if I believe I'm nothing when I'm something? It's still self-deception. 
The next one, verse 4. Each of you should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to someone else. Huh. I would love for you. You want to lower your self-imposed stress. Stop comparison. Stop critique. Now, I know we've been taught that criticism improves performance. Well, let me teach you the lie. Andrew's been trying to help me lose weight. And all he does is call me chubby bunnies and he puts me in the scale and he tells me how fat I am. And he's been doing this now for 10 weeks. I've lost no weight. He's criticized me. In fact, I probably gained weight because his criticism, instead of improving my performance, has made my performance worse. Self-imposed stress. It's the stress you put on yourself, usually based that what you're doing in life isn't good enough. So all of a sudden, you compare and you critique. Okay, men. Men, we compare usually two things. Our abilities and accomplishments. We compare our W-2. Let me give you a shock. There are people in this world who work less than I do, who make more money. If I compare to that, I lose. Now, women, you probably compare the way you look. Can I give you an assignment, girls? When you look at yourself in the mirror, see the awe, not the flaw. One reason why low esteem is because you compare and you lose. And instead of comparing, I want you to do exactly what it says in Romans 15, 7. Paul writes, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. You want to lower your stress? How about you learn to accept yourself for who you are? Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 says this, By the grace of God, I am who I am. Wow. By the grace of God, I am who I am. Now, let's say you want to compare to people. Two rules. The person you compare to has to be alive. And secondly, they have to be real. People in the Bible, I think it was Joshua who compared himself to dead Abraham. Stop comparing yourself to dead people. And stop comparing yourself to people who aren't real. This is why the media is so powerful. Some of the pictures you see on the media, some of the advertisements, they've been photoshopped. So you're comparing yourself to a person who in reality doesn't look like that. Comparison of self to others, whether it's physical, intellectual, emotional, social, or spiritual, will lower your esteem because you always compare things you feel inferior in because if you win a comparison, that's called arrogance. And he said, don't think of yourself more highly, Romans 12, 3. So when you, when you compare, you have to lose. And you typically compare inferiorities. Wow. So you're comparing things, your inferiority, to what you think is their superiority. My assignment, stop comparing and stop criticism. Read Mark Chapter 8, 22 through 26, between the first and second touch, look at what Jesus did. He just simply touched again. I'll say it again. I believe that the best learning tool at times is failure. If you can ask yourself why I failed. Now, here's what's sad. At times, the worst learning tool we have is failure. I believe that we are all like eggs. And inside the egg is a bird. So we're like birds inside the egg. The bird inside this egg has to pick, peck his way out. If he stays in the egg long, he will die. Because his nutrition and, and food and his oxygen will go away. Well, all of us have shells around us that we got to peck through. Maybe one of your shells is low esteem. 
Maybe one of your shows is guilt. You gotta peck through that and fight your way through that. James says, trials are pure joy. And we'll talk about that next week. Trials are pure joy. They strengthen your faith. Now, you know the easiest way to kill a bird in the shell? Crack the shell for it and help the bird out. In reality, when you do that, you're taking away the bird's struggle. The struggle the bird does to get out of the shell is actually good for it and it's actually God designed. That struggle makes the bird stronger. It gives him muscle tone, it helps him with his wings, it probably does coordination. Now, think of it the same way. We all have shells around us, we gotta peck through. We gotta fight through our shell. Paul says in Philippians, I press on. Well, in reality, you don't only do you press on through life, you gotta press through stuff. Pressing through hard times without comparing and criticism is a great learning tool. God says in Isaiah 40, 31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. God sees us as eagles. Here's what's sad. We see ourselves as chickens. I wonder who's right. Let's pray. God, help us to recognize that some of our stress is self-imposed. And God, yes, we critique ourselves, we compare ourselves, we constantly beat ourselves up. We see we're worthless. Instead of finding the eye in us, we find the flaw. God, you see us as eagles, you see us as warriors. We see ourselves as weak and we see ourselves as chickens. Father, teach us who we are from your point of view, not the world's. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.